this is the first block of the month for for our barn star quilt just so that you what you are looking at here is my half square triangles which is the first step i did do these already in the 32 at a time half square triangle video so if you have not watched that yet that would be a good one to watch either before or you could do it after would be okay too but i recommend watching that video before you get started on your lock this month and we're going to be sewing them together and let me see how they want me to sew them together so it looks like they'll be just like this where it's coming down at an angle like that okay so i'm going to set up my other triangles beside me like this and then I just know I can grab those so away we go all right so we now have <laughs> a mistake <laughs> Oh boy, I guess I'm going to do a whole lot of seam picking because I messed that up. I was supposed to have those turned the other direction. Well, I'm going to cut for a moment. So these I'm setting aside. They will be pressed and we'll do the next step after that. So now. I'm going to sew, these are my green pieces, which is piece D, and I'm going to sew those to my triangle pieces. And my triangle pieces, I want to be going like this. So let's set them all up there so that we don't get confused again. And now I can just grab them each from the side I need to. It's always better to take a moment and get your stuff set up properly instead of being flustered and grabbing it any which way and then trying to turn it. it if you can get to it without turning it, that's the way to do it without making mistakes. As I just demonstrated. <laughs> making some massive mistakes <laughs> but you know i left it in there instead of just i'm gonna leave it in here because it's important that everybody sees everyone makes mistakes and it doesn't you know then doesn't always come together the first time that you do it sometimes you have to Pick a few stitches and try again. So now we're going to be, we've got these attached. We need to attach the C blocks now to the other side. So, and I am going to press these, but I'm going to press them once I get both sides sewn because the way that they are right now it's not going to I'm not sewing over the seam that is that needs to be pressed now these ones we're just going to be looks like they're going to be sewn together like this. So now it looks like this and we need to take the next piece 
and we're just going to add to it so that it continues going the same way and looking the same. So. This is another separate unit. It is not the same unit as this one. It is different. So you'll, you're going to make this and then you're also going to make this. Apparently I left that little <laughs> tiny triangle from when I was trimming up my half square triangles. By the way, something that I should note is that if you used the 32 at a time half square triangle method, the measurements I gave you in the video are going to give you are going to give you larger than the size squares that you need. So you will have plenty of room to trim them down. You don't need to add extra. You don't need to add extra in order to be able to trim. In fact, it's got a very generous amount to trim down. So now the next step is we're back to these green squares. We want the blue part of our triangle facing up. I'm just gonna sew the green squares to the edge. Okay guys, so to be clear, we sewed these two together and then we are going to sew together another C half square triangle and D. This is not, this is not a continuation of this one. This will be a separate piece. Likewise, these will be separate pieces from this. You will not sew these together and then add a D to the end. You will sew together these, and then you will sew together these pieces, and then three of these, and then these. So just to just to illustrate that more clearly, this is what I've done. I've got these original two pieces right here, and then this was another set of three pieces right here and then these three and then try and zoom out a little bit so you can see these four all right now we are going to attach these e-blocks and these guys So this is what we have now, and we are going to take the next piece. We're basically building this sort of like a log cabin. So we're going to take the next piece and attach it along here. All right, we're now on to this step. We've got this all pressed, and this is the final piece of the part that goes together like a log cabin block. All right, so this portion is done. So now we are going to move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got our F blocks and our G blocks. We are going to lay our F like this and our G we're going to meet up at a diagonal like this. We're going to, well, I guess perpendicular. We're going to sew at a diagonal and turn this into an elongated lying yeast block, which when we open it, will look like this. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so now we have half of our elongated flying yeast block put together. We just need to trim this up 
and then iron it, and then we can attach the other side. However, if we sew a half of an inch over to the side, we can have a bunch of bonus half square triangles. Now it's up to you if you decide you want to do this or not, but they may come in handy for other projects down the line. Okay, so this is what we have now. And we are going to continue and do the other side of our flying geese block, which will be done the same way, only reversed. So I'm just going to lay it down like this, and then we will sew down like this. When we open it up, this is what it'll look like. So now we have our I pieces and our H pieces. And we are going to make left and right units of these. Okay, so I messed up and I said these going this direction, which does not work. Do not sew through this little corner here. That is not going to work. You want to sew it instead going this way. So that it opens. So now up. we are going to take these ones that we made and we're going to take these smaller pieces. We I think this is piece C is what that's called. And we're going to sew a diagonal along here. Okay, so this is what we have now. So we are going to be sewing these together and then these together. And then I'm going to press both of those and then sew them together down the middle. Okay, so now we have this block and we are going to take our J's and snowball them into the corner. So they will be like this. And we're gonna do that on both sides. Okay, so now we have K and L. And we are going to be attaching these two. Like this. And we're going to put our seam right here along the edge. Before we press this, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we're doing the exact same thing, but on the top and the bottom now. So it'll be like this. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just attaching our M triangles to each side, just like we did with the white. So we'll do these two and then press and then do top and bottom. We're going to be attaching these blocks and we're going to be attaching these blocks. Okay, so I have these long rows done. Now we're just going to bring them together in the middle. Remember to hold the center of your block together to sew it. Okay, guys, there she is. The first barn star quilt block all assembled and put together. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me and sewing along to make our first barn star sampler block. Please. Make sure to check back again next month because we will have the second one up and keep an eye out in the meantime for any bonus videos. Thanks for dropping by and please remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you again next time. Bye.